debunking the lies told about Satanism and the Church of Satan in a certain little quick reference guide infographic that keeps being shared on social media. Today on Satan's Plane. Well, it's not Satan worship, it's Satanism. It's embracing the life-enriching things which have traditionally been given the devil's name. Pride, lust, earthly success, rational self-interest, atheism, humor, nonconformity, science, a passion for living, being selective about whom we love. We don't see these as shameful sins, but empowering ideals. And we also recognize the psychological power and fun of symbolism and aesthetics, so we utilize Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot for what we're about. Satan Splain, Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain. Before I get into today's topic, I just want to talk a little bit about one of my other Satanism-related projects. Something I've been doing for several years now is Dr. Shit's PhD in Satanic Memes. This started off as a Facebook page and is still predominantly a Facebook page. A couple of months ago, we finally decided to set things up on Instagram too, but it's essentially a humorous meme page made by Satanists for Satanists. You see, we got tired of seeing so-called Satanic meme pages that were absolutely nothing more but Christian bashing. And I mean... You know, that sort of stuff is fun, too, but why limit a satanic meme page to just that? Back in episode six of Satan's Plane, you heard an older interview with me from 2016, where I talked a little bit about that page, which was still pretty new at the time. I'm sure in the future we'll be doing a full-blown Satan's Plane episode about the Dr. Vincent Shits page. Who are the other people involved in the page, how we come up with the memes that we come up with, and all that stuff. To briefly answer that, though, and you'll see where I'm going with this in a moment, sometimes for the Dr. Shits page, we'll just take an existing meme template that's popular and trending, and we'll put our own satanic twist on it. Sometimes we'll just do something randomly goofy, like a pun, and make a meme out of that. Sometimes we'll notice uh, like a bad argument against Satanism that we keep hearing, or maybe even a line happening over and over again among Satanists, or to Satanists, and we'll make a meme about that. So, for example, the Illuminati believers from Nigeria, there are all these people from Nigeria who, for some strange reason, believe that any organization or website with Satan in the title is part of the Illuminati. So we've made memes making fun of that. Another thing we have done a couple of times is make a meme in response to some meme going around that tries to say Satanism is this or Satanism is that, and we'll mock it for being wrong. And that is my long segue to bring us to the particular meme that I want to talk about today. Or perhaps meme is not the right term. It's not exactly a template that gets copied and reworked, which is really what a meme is. It is actually an infographic which makes claims about the Church of Satan, and most of them are just wrong. It is a picture that is called a Kids Quick Reference Guide. And they spell kids, K-I-D-Z, quick as K-W-I-K. So cutesy, intentional, misspelling, you know. So the Kids Quick Reference Guide subtitled, A Handy Dandy Visual Guide to the Differences Between the Two Most Prominent Modern Satanic Organizations That For Some Reason People Keep Mixing Up. And they list 23 points of differences that they think are between the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple. So it's a comparison of the Church of Satan, you know, the first group in known history to have really developed and established a religion calling itself Satanism, and then the publicity stunt group created by filmmaker Kevin Soling, who originally professed to be an actual Satan worshippers club, and then they tried to say they weren't, and then their high priest Brian Werner quit after realizing the Satanic Temple aren't Satanists, but are really just a bunch of social justice warriors who wear pentagrams. And yeah, anyway, that group. So as you look at this list of 23 differences that they cite, the intention, of course, is to see most of these and make the reader think, oh, gee, this second one sounds like it has much more mass appeal and is a force for good. So this other one is certainly better than the Church of Satan. Now, back in January of 2019, the image was being shared around, so I made a blog post about it, and then shortly after, we made a Dr. Shit's meme to mark what was wrong with it. And recently, this past weekend, I saw it come up again on social media, so I figured, "Mm, let's address it here on Satan's Plane. Most of what I'll be saying here 
were the same points I made in the blog post, but I have some more things to say about it too. In fact, I have so much to say that I'm going to keep this episode of Satan's Plane just to this topic. I was going to read some listener mail and talk about other stuff, but we can do that next time. Let us jump in. Comparison point number one, founding dates, Satanic Temple, 2013, Church of Satan, 1966. Well, the Church of Satan one is correct. I suppose the Satanic Temple one is too. You can go look at archived copies of their website from back then. And that was when they professed a belief in devil worship, completely opposite to what they claim today. But I digress. Let us move on. Number two, who is officially recognized as a tax-exempt church by the IRS? The chart has a check mark for Satanic Temple and an X for Church of Satan. Now it's true, Satanic Temple filed for tax exemption and got it as a Christian church, go figure. Why doesn't the Church of Satan have tax exemption? Because the Church of Satan rejects tax exemption. We say in the Pentagonal Revisionism list we want taxation of all churches. Why does the Church of Satan say this? Because for too long... We've seen Christian churches get away with things on the bureaucratic side. And as comedian George Carlin said in 1988, if they're so interested in politics and government and public policy, let them pay their fucking admission price like everybody else. Tax the churches. It seems, though, that groupies from the Satanic Temple mention points like tax exemption as if to say that this makes the Church of Satan less legitimate. Trying to say that we've never been legally recognized as a religion. Well, first of all, that would be a lie. The Church of Satan has been recognized by the U.S. government in other ways over the decades. The easiest example that always comes to mind is the Army Chaplain's Handbook. It has entries on how to do services for just about every religion, and there is indeed a Church of Satan entry. We have members in the military who have opted to get Church of Satan stamped on their dog tags. The first public satanic funeral was done for a Navy officer in 1967. So if it matters so much to you, yes, we've gotten the U.S. government to recognize the Church of Satan on some legal level in a couple of different ways. In fact, if you look up the court records of the Satanic Temple when they were trying to get their tax exemption, they had to mention Anton LaVey and the Church of Satan in some way to legitimize the religion of Satanism having already been established. You don't have to take my word for it. These are public records. You can look them up. Second, and more importantly, though, Why would you need the government to give you validation for your existence? I know Satanism is a religion. It's my religion. I know the Church of Satan is an organization representing that. I've been involved with it for over 20 years. Whether the central office has to file this tax form or that tax form by April 15th every year, that's irrelevant to me. Number three, the question on whether each organization is, quote, taken seriously by credible religious schools as a manifestation of modern Satanism. And they give a check mark to both the Church of Satan and the Satanic Temple. Okay. Though I have to question this term, modern Satanism. Were there forms of Satanism existing before modern times? I mean, devil worshippers have certainly existed for centuries. There have also been groups of bored aristocrats who've performed black masses, usually as an excuse to get laid, you know, have an orgy. There have been occult groups that get called Satanists by clueless Christians. But the bigger problem here is, why should we consider the Satanic Temple to be Satanism at all? I know a lot of dweebs will hear this point, and I know they're thinking, er, that's a no true Scotsman fallacy. It is not. I know I'm getting sidetracked here, away from the list, but this is a point I've been meaning to get around to mentioning on Satan's Plane, and it won't be the last time you hear it from me, I'm sure. But here it is. To non-Satanists, I understand the confusion. You see the Church of Satan and some other organization calling themselves a satanic organization, and some other website or organization calling themselves some other type of Satanism, and horror movies that describe Satanists in another way. Maybe you also knew some rebellious kid in middle school who carved pentagrams on the desk and called himself a Satanist. And again, Christians labeling just about any group they don't understand as Satanic. So to non-Satanists seeing all of this, you might conclude, hmm, 
These are all different denominations of the same religion fighting with each other. It's, you know, just like how Protestants call Catholics heathens who worship idols, and the Catholics call the Jehovah's Witnesses a cult, and the Jehovah's Witnesses object to the Baptists, and yada yada. And so when Bill, this satan plain guy, says the Church of Satan is legit Satanism and this other group isn't, well, it must be the same sort of religious fundamentalism, right? That is wrong, and I will explain why. Going back to that example of Christianity, it's recognized that Catholicism, Protestantism, Mormons, Presbyterians, and so on, that they're all denominations of Christianity. They're denominations of the same religion, not different religions. And that's because they all have the same core beliefs, namely the beliefs which, when all put together, distinguish Christianity from the other religions of the world. Now, Catholics and Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, have very different views on what salvation means, what exactly happens when you die, the debate about faith, faith versus works, and so on, but they're both ultimately based on the Holy Bible. More specifically, both of those denominations place their ultimate focus on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus as described in the Gospels of that same Holy Bible. And you can trace back the theological origins of those two denominations and historically find a common source, and so on. Now, what about these other groups calling their belief system Satanism, or in some cases being called Satanism by other people? Are these denominations of the same religion? If you examine them, I would say the answer is no. They're not different denominations of the same religion. For starters, I have seen no evidence of an actual spelled-out religion calling itself Satanism before the Church of Satan was established in 1966. You can go back centuries and find devil worshippers, like I said, sure. You can go back and find the word Satanism with a lowercase s used to describe vaguely just about any kind of sin. But there is no rational reason, I see, to consider that sort of reverse Christianity, that devil worship, to be a different denomination of the same religion with what's explained in the Satanic Bible. Those two belief systems do not share the same core theology. They differ greatly on a fundamental level, in, in a way that is just incompatible. They may both make use of the character Satan, and maybe use inverted pentagrams, but again, not much beyond that. And the same goes with these other groups I see calling themselves some kind of Satanism or another. Either they have a belief system that is so fundamentally different from Satanism that it really can't be called another denomination of the same religion. Either that, or they do claim to adhere the, to, you know, the Satanic Bible, Anton LaVey, or some of them claim they're closer to what Anton LaVey really believed in and somehow we're not. But then further examination shows that that's not the case, or at the very least, there doesn't seem to be a reason to make a whole new denomination. I've seen some of these groups claim to believe in this or that, and it's they're things that, again, are either fundamentally incompatible with the Church of Satan or show like a clear misunderstanding of what the Church of Satan actually believes in, or are things that Church of Satan members can already opt to do if they want. And again, it begs the question of why do you need a new denomination or a new type of Satanism? In fact, when it comes to the Satanic Temple, it's kind of unclear what they really believe in the first place. They have a bunch of vague platitudes. They have a list of seven tenets, which is something they whipped up to protest a Ten Commandments monument, which ended up getting taken down thanks to the ACLU, not because of what the Satanic Temple did. They threaten to insert a religion that people have heard of, Satanism. That's what they claim they have as the religion. But when you press them for details on what exactly they believe, it's not really clear that they have a religion established. I could go further into this topic. It really should be a topic for a standalone episode of Satan's Plane. But I just wanted to mention a little of that now. Let us get back to the kids' quick reference guide. Point number four, belief in an actual Satan. An X for both organizations. Well, they at least got that right. Which is more than I can say for the host of the Your Magic podcast who interviewed me. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Satan's Plane, episode number two. But again, like I said, this certainly wasn't the case when the Satanic Temple first started, because when they started, they professed to actually believe in a literal, actual Satan as a deity. Point number five, belief in magic, and that is M-A-G-I-C-K. Yes, magic with a K at the end. The chart says no for the Satanic Temple, but yes for the Church of Satan. Oh boy, here we go. Another topic that could be its own Satan's Plane episode, and I'm sure it eventually will be. But let me try to explain why this claim that the Church of Satan believes in magic, let alone with a K, is incorrect. So first, when you see that spelling of magic with a K at the end, what does that mean? Well, the word magic in general, M-A-G-I-C, in the general English usage, well, that can refer to stage magic, which, you know, is things like card tricks, pulling rabbits out of top hats, sleight of hand, illusionism. But then in the occult world, magic may be a way to refer to casting spells, doing conjurations, and that sort of stuff. So... Certain occult belief systems argue that people shouldn't use the same word to describe both. Thus, they want to spell the occult type of magic with a K to distinguish it from stage magic. Well, first of all, the Church of Satan does not spell magic with a K, and there are some good reasons for this. When we talk about magic, it's not something we believe is a supernatural practice like the other occult religions do. If you pick up the Satanic Bible... The beginning of the chapter on magic starts off with a definition, and anybody who can read that definition can see that, as it's viewed and used in Satanism, magic does not require belief in the supernatural. What this chart is trying to do, of course, is conflate the two, to try to make the Church of Satan look bad. I mean, in the previous point, point number four, belief in actual Satan, they admit that that's something the Church of Satan does not do. We don't believe in a literal Satan. We take Satan just as a metaphor. Well, kids, guess what? We do the same with the word magic. Magic is theatrical. You don't need to believe in the supernatural to use the self-transformative fantasy utilizing psychology that we metaphorically call magic. Now, once again, this too is a big subject that deserves its own Satan's Plane episode. Maybe several. Hell, maybe its own separate podcast for that matter. In the meantime, though, if you go to YouTube and do a search for Greater Magic Discussion with Magister Bill M., you can find a two-part discussion on this topic, going into great detail and explaining how this metaphor fits in with the aesthetic worldview that Satanism has. So we do not believe in magic because to us it is not some sort of thing to believe in. It is not a supernatural belief system or supernatural practice like believing in God or believing in the powers of ESP. It is a practice. It is an art. Magic to us is a tool. It's theater. It's a psychological exercise in fantasy and self-transformation and psychodrama. It is a very subjective experience. It is not the blue candle-burning stuff you read from Silver Ravenwolf. Of course, given that the Satanic Temple completely missed the boat on the first half of the Satanic Bible, it's not surprising that they would miss the boat on the second half of the book, so let us move on. Number six in the list, foundational texts. The infographic claims the Satanic Temple has a, quote, vast literary canon, whereas the Church of Satan just has, quote, the works of Anton LaVey. Well, first, what is this vast literary canon that the Satanic Temple claims to have. You can look it up on their website. It's mostly just a random list of unrelated books mentioning Satan in some way or another. There's not really a lot of consistency between them that I see. Some even go against what the Satanic Temple claims to believe today. And I would bet money that most members of the Satanic Temple have never read even a tenth of the books that they list, if any of them at all. In fact, I would bet money that Most Satanic Temple members can't even name most of the books in that list. 
So there's nothing foundational about that. And again, the Satanic Temple has radically changed what they believe since they first started, so that begs the question of what exactly these texts founded. As for the Church of Satan, yes, I would call the works of Anton LaVey the foundational texts. Of course, those books in turn were inspired by other texts. He didn't just pull the ideas out of thin air. He had his share of influences, just as any other philosopher or the founder of any religion has had. LaVey was quite open about his influences, and of course the Church of Satan has more literature than just the foundational literature. There are the works of Blanche Barton, Peter H. Gilmore, and other members who've written books or articles. Even aside from that, the Church of Satan has always maintained a suggested reading list. You can easily find the recommended reading list on churchofsatan.com. And they're all books that came out before the Satanic Bible, pretty much. So if the implied dig here is that the Church of Satan is bad because we have a definitive founder and the Satanic Temple is good because they can claim many of these random books that they haven't really read are canonical, well, it's not much of a selling point, I would say. Point number seven, political views. Some of you listeners at this point may be thinking, hey, Bill, didn't you cover this topic in Satan's Plane episode number five and how the Church of Satan makes it abundantly clear that it holds no official political views, but rather it lets the individual members decide that sort of stuff for themselves? Yes, yes, I did. How painfully wrong does the infographic get it? Well, before we get to what it says about the Church of Satan, let's first read what it says about the political views of the Satanic Temple. For a Satanic Temple, they quote Doug Mesner. Well, they call him Lucian Greaves, but I call Doug Maseko by his name Doug because that's not only his first name, but it was the name I knew him as, and the name he even introduced himself to me as when I met him back in 2005. That was when Doug was still a Church of Satan member, but I digress. They quote him here as saying, quote, a non-theistic movement aligned with liberty, equality, and rationalism. We'll get back to that in a moment. What does it say, though, about the Church of Satan? Does it say correctly that we leave politics up to members to decide? No, no, no. Instead, this chart gives a line which they attribute to Anton LaVey, and they say that Anton LaVey said, quote, just Ayn Rand's philosophy with ceremony and ritual added, unquote. Wow, so much wrong here. Where to begin? First of all, that Anton LaVey quotation is a fake. It's a corruption of a corruption of a quote Anton LaVey gave to a newspaper in 1970. I already talked about what the actual quote was, the actual source to the full context of it. I did all that back in Satan's Plain episode number four. And in that same episode, I go over the vast differences philosophically on where Anton LaVey and Ayn Rand differ. And I mean differ on a fundamental level. So this is a lie that the Satanic Temple is telling you. But it's even more stupid than that. Remember, they're trying to compare at this point in the chart political views. Ayn Rand's philosophical views are not necessarily the same as her views on politics and economics. Now, again, if you want to know what the Church of Satan's actual stance is on politics, I covered all that in Satan's Plain episode right after that one, episode number five. So it was after I did the comparisons between Rand and LeVay. In fact, you don't even have to listen to the politics episode. If you did a 10-second search on the web, you could find the Church of Satan's policy on politics, which is on churchofsatan.com. And in that article... We explain what I just said a moment ago, that the Church of Satan, as an organization, does not have an official political position. We leave politics up to our individual members to decide. Why do we take this approach? Because Satanism is a religion of the individual, not the collective. It's up to you to decide which political issues are the most important to you, which ones affect your well-being the most, what is in your own selfish interest. That answer may be different for different members of the Church of Satan. That's because we live in different countries, different regions, like urban versus rural. Some Satanists have children, some Satanists don't have children, some have this profession, some work in this other field, and so on. So that's going to affect 
what is in our best interest when it comes to voting. So again, see Satan's Plain episode number five. Now getting back to this quote from Doug, a non-theistic movement aligned with liberty, equality, and rationalism. Well, I'm sure some objectivists would argue that Ayn Rand actually did want that politically. She was certainly an atheist. She praised rationality over superstition. Maybe you might have different definitions on what equality means, but again, they didn't seem to think this one through. Is there a political group who doesn't believe that they're on the side of things like rationalism? I mean, I can certainly think of some groups that I would call irrational, but you don't hear them saying that themselves. You don't hear somebody saying, yeah, we stand with no liberty and no rationality. Now, to be fair, this is a quick infographic. I realize that. So I realize they had to oversimplify to fit a line in that little space of pixels. But it's clear, once again, they're just trying to smear the Church of Satan here, and we're completely wrong in their assessment. Next, number eight. For the sake of time here, I'm going to address several of these things at once since they're related. So number eight, which organization fights for secularism? Number nine, which organization defends reproductive rights? And then later in the list, we see which organization is, quote, in the news for the activities, including civil liberties, campaigns, litigation, public events, and after that, which organization is, quote, socially and politically active. So on these four points, lo and behold, a check mark each for the Satanic Temple and an X each for the Church of Satan. Once again, this is bullshit. And it ties back in with the point I just made about politics. First of all, the Satanic Temple doesn't really do all these things successfully. I don't have the time to go into the examples, but they certainly don't fight for secularism. They do the precise opposite. They show up where Christianity is seen in the public sphere, and they try to insert more religion into state affairs. As for defending reproductive rights, well, first of all, not all Satanists are pro-choice. This goes back yet again to what I said about politics. Second of all, and this is a point I made near the end of Satan's Plain, episode number two. You are not helping the pro-choice movement when you show up in protests and say you are standing in solidarity with the pro-choice people as Satanists. I can't believe this has to be explained to people. If you still don't understand why, let me try to break this down for you. Who are the people most opposed to abortion? Well, a lot of them are hardcore Christians. Why are pro-life people against abortion? Answer? Because they believe a fetus is a human being, thus it would follow that an abortion is baby murder, which they consider to be bad. That is their position. Now, what is something else that hardcore Christians believe in? Well, a lot of them believe that Satanists are a bunch of devil-worshipping baby murderers. And you think that showing up to pro-choice rallies in the name of Satanism is going to help? The level of disconnect you have to have from reality to think that is just off the charts. Now, does this mean that no Church of Satan member ever fights for causes like abortion rights or civil liberties or this or that? No, of course we have members who do that. Like I said, it is up to the individual Church of Satan members to decide which political causes are important to them, how much are worth their time to fight, and how and when they want to go about it. And that's even if you want to. There are Satanists in the Church of Satan I know who are about as apolitical as it gets and could not care less about this cause or another. There's nothing wrong with that. If you think there is, then a religion about being your own god is probably not for you. But if there is a political cause that you are passionate about as a Satanist, then most likely... There are already people out there who feel the same way on that issue and organizations specifically dedicated to fighting that cause. So if you want to fight for gay rights, for example, you can join an organization like GLAAD. If you want to fight for secularism, you can help the ACLU or the Freedom From Religion Foundation or Atheists United for the Separation of Church and State. If you want to help the homeless. There are hundreds of existing groups who do that. Now, why should we expect the Church of Satan 
to do the job of these sorts of groups. It wouldn't make any sense for us to do that as an entire organization. Again, one reason for that is that different members of the Church of Satan are going to feel differently on different issues, or even if their issues were overwhelmingly feel the same about, whether it's a battle that we feel is worth fighting, it's worth our time, and to what extent, that answer is going to be different for different Satanists in the Church of Satan. But also, it just wouldn't make any sense for us as an entire organization to do the job of these groups. As I've said before, fighting for social acceptance in the name of an explicitly adversarial religion is not only a contradiction, but could backfire as trying to get the status quo to associate a particular cause with Satanism will usually make them have a bad view of the cause, not a good view of Satanism. I mean, how dumb do you have to be to be a white knight in the name of Satan? I could go on more about this, but we have lots of other points to get to. In the meantime, though, go to churchofsatan.com and look up the essay called Mirror Mirror, as it is very relevant to this. And make no mistake about it, the Satanic Temple is precisely who they claim to be fighting against. They are a tax-exempt organization who tries to combine church and state by inserting religion, or at least the threat of a religion people have heard of, into public spheres. They take money from people who think they are fighting this, and they don't deliver what they promised to do. Next on the list, this is a real easy one to debunk. Point number 10 has a physical headquarters. They say that Satanic Temple does have one, and the Church of Satan does not. This is a lie. The Church of Satan does have a physical headquarters. You can find photographs of the physical headquarters, video of the headquarters. I have been to the physical headquarters. It is in Poughkeepsie, New York. Presumably, the Satanic Temple knows all of this. I mean, they can't be that stupid, right? Either they are, or more likely they're just counting on readers of this infographic to not check for themselves. Point number 11 has local chapters. Yes for the Satanic Temple, no for the Church of Satan. Well, this is true. The Church of Satan used to have grottos. We got rid of them. Why did we get rid of them? Because we found, in this day and age of the internet... We don't need them anymore. We also had a few cases where some grottos would grow into little hotbeds of drama, where an occasional grotto master would get a little too power happy for their own good and things would turn into a shit show. In short, they proved to be more of a hassle than they were worth in the end. If I want to do something with other Church of Satan members, I just connect with those members and do it. I've met up in person many times with many Church of Satan members over the years, and we didn't need a grotto to do it. We just connected to each other online through the Church of Satan and planned something and did it. As I said myself in a recent episode, I can think of some Church of Satan members who live near me, but I have no desire to hang out with them, much less form a grotto with them. It's not because they're not real Satanists or anything like that. I just don't happen to get along with them. I would rather drive the extra few hours or buy the airfare to go meet up with the Church of Satan members I do happen to get along with and get along with very well. Just because a fellow Satanist lives in the same zip code as you doesn't automatically mean you two will get along. Imagine that. So right now I'm only about halfway through the list, so let's take a quick break before we resume. You are listening to Satan Splain. You are listening to Satan Splain, Real Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. For questions, comments, and correspondence, send an email to bill at satansplain.com. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain. There are a variety of ways you can listen to Satan Splain. We're available on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and other places as well, including right on the official Satan Splain website satansplain.com You can find all of the episodes there as well as the show's FAQ if you have comments, questions, complaints hate mail, well for that sort of stuff you can email me bill at satansplain.com is the email address and with that let us continue going through the kids quick reference guide 
Number 12, it says, Satanic Temple is actively growing, whereas the Church of Satan is not. Mm, how would you know this either way? The Church of Satan does not release its membership numbers. So, this is an unfounded claim. Next, number 13, holds regular meetings and events. Satanic Temple, yes. Church of Satan, no. Well, that is the claim on the infographic. My response to this kind of goes back to what I just said about grottos. If you're a Church of Satan member and you want to get together with other Church of Satan members, nothing is really stopping you. Some people join and have absolutely no desire to meet up with other Church of Satan members in person. Some members do regularly meet other members. Sometimes those events are open to the public or are publicized on Church of Satan channels. The Devil's Reign events in Florida are an example. But Satanism itself is not a religion that requires regular meetings and services in the first place. So I don't see why we should expect the central office to always set up regular social meetings and events, which people may or may not attend. I wrote a whole essay about this a while back, which you can find on churchofsatan.com. That essay is called Satanism is Not a Congregational Religion. Number 14 in the list. In the news talking about Satanism, it gives a check mark to both of us. Yes, journalists through the past several decades know that provocatism sells, and sometimes that means putting Satanists or Satanism in headline to make for good clickbait, so I don't see what the point is here. Numbers 15 and 16, social activism and that stuff. Well, we already talked about that earlier before the break. Number 17 accepts donations. Yes to both. That is true. Though I would point out that people who donate to the Satanic Temple seem to be under the illusion that they're fighting for secularism and winning court cases when, in reality, they're just lining the pockets of Kevin Soling and crew. If you want to donate to the Church of Satan, great. Thanks for the money. We do have administrative costs, you know, overhead costs and that sort of thing. But Satanism is a religion for the individual, not pipe dreams about changing the world on a collective level. So we leave the empty promises to the white light religions. Number 18, membership fees. It says zero for the Satanic Temple, with some fine print saying it costs money if you want a membership card. And for the Church of Satan, it lists $250. Well, the second part is a lie. The current lifetime membership fee at the time of this recording is $225, but I'll let that slide. The Satanic Temple, as I understand it, considers you a member if you just sign up for their mailing list. To which I say, how great of a religion can it be if all you have to do is sign a mailing list? Not only that, there are people who sign up for the mailing list who say they don't even identify as Satanists. You don't have to take my word for it. The Satanic Temple has stated this themselves. Even the person who made the documentary that they did, uh, she joined and still, last I checked, doesn't identify as a Satanist. But even if one group was $250 and one was $300, why should this be an important factor for determining which one you should join? I mean, are you bargain hunting for your own beliefs has there any i mean has there ever been somebody who said uh let's say for example well i believe in the quran and i was going to join this muslim mosque but the tithing at this presbyterian church is cheaper so i guess i'm going to be a presbyterian instead of a muslim well then again maybe there are people who say that i don't know i mean i've seen people who will permanently mark their arm with a shitty $40 tattoo instead of saving up a little more money to get a great-looking tattoo by a professional. So, yeah, I guess some people are like that. But also, whoever wrote this chart seems to not be able to do basic math. You see, the membership fee in the Church of Satan is a lifetime membership fee. When I take the Church of Satan's current fee for a lifetime membership and divide that by the amount of time I've been a member, it means that membership has cost me less than a dollar a month. Actually, it's cost even less than that because I joined so long ago that the price was different back then. We've adjusted it, you know, for inflation and stuff. But if you're not planning on staying with Satanism for a lifetime... If you think, well, I like Satanism now, but if, 
in a few years, you know, I may try Buddhism next. Well, if that's the case, how really committed are you to this principle? In which case, yeah, you probably shouldn't get a lifetime membership. Number 19 in the list, Baphomet Monuments. Baphomet Monuments. I know people quibble about the, the pronunciation, which one is correct. I guess we'll go with Baphomet. Anyway, the chart says that the Satanic Temple has Baphomet Monuments, and the Church of Satan does not. Well, as I understand it, the Satanic Temple has a monument, one they put on wheels and roll up to whatever publicity stunt they're doing, and they'll let people take their photo with it at their headquarters for a fee. But, okay, who cares? I've seen statues of different sizes made by Church of Satan members who are sculptors, but I don't see what the point is in trying to make one public. Why would I, as a Satanist, want to put a Baphomet statue in public? It would look cool in my front yard, maybe, but what would I get out of having that on public ground? It might piss off some Christians, but okay, so what? It's not like they're going to see the statue and think, oh yeah, I should back off on the Jesus thing if they're going to put that there. No, if anything, they'll probably do the damnedest to vandalize it. And the Church of Satan doesn't proselytize because that just doesn't make any sense in the context of Satanism. This is a religion that is not just for everybody. It's Satanism. It's adversarial. Again, see that essay I mentioned earlier, Mirror, Mirror. I should probably, I'm going to try to put all the links of these things in the description. We'll see. Number 20, After School Satan Clubs. The Satanic Temple has them and the Church of Satan does not. Yes, this is correct. You see, these people claiming to be fighting for secularism want to copycat what Christians are doing by having an indoctrination club in public schools for children. In contrast, the Church of Satan does not believe in the indoctrination of children. Like I said, this isn't a religion for just anybody. And going back to an earlier point, if the goal of this sort of program is not teach Satanism, but try to teach, as I think they claim, the scientific method or skepticism or the evil history of the Inquisition or something like that, something purposely designed to piss off Christians if they put it in a program like that. Well, if you want to do these things, like if you want to teach the scientific method, have a science club. If you want to teach history, have a history club. But no, the Satanic Temple doesn't want that because those things aren't their goals. They just want to start controversy where it doesn't really exist most of the time and play the victim card when Christians get mad, and then ask people for more money to fight against it, and nothing really changes. We're coming down to the end of the list now, number 21, authoritarian. The chart says the Satanic Temple is not authoritarian, but the Church of Satan is. My initial reaction to this was one of half-kidding sarcasm, because when I wrote about this point in the blog, I just said, yeah, and so what? It's Satanism, dumbass. Of course it's authoritarian. But I've since realized some people are too slow to pick up on hyperbole or sarcasm in general, so what does this mean? Well, let us look at how Dictionary.com describes authoritarian. The first entry says, quote, Favoring complete obedience or subjection to authority as opposed to individual freedom. Well, the Church of Satan not only doesn't demand such obedience, but encourages personal freedom. We do have some standards. For example, your freedom doesn't extend to being a child molester or torturing animals and occult rituals or supporting organizations that actively lie about the Church of Satan. You would be rightfully kicked out of the organization for those sorts of things. And if you find such actions to be authoritarian and a threat to your freedom, well, maybe you're a sociopath. I don't know. Now, the second entry in Dictionary.com for authoritarianism says, of or relating to a government or political system, principle or practice in which individual freedom is held as completely subordinate to the power or authority of the state, centered either in one person or a small group that is not constitutionally accountable to the people. Well, this certainly doesn't apply to the Church of Satan either. I already talked about politics, and the same with the third entry in Dictionary.com, exercising complete or almost complete control over the will of another or of others, for example, an authoritarian parent. Like I said, you can join the Church of Satan and then decide to 
no longer interact with any of the members. So this doesn't apply. What is it that the Satanic Temple thinks the Church of Satan is demanding of its members? What is it that people think the Church of Satan is commanding me to do that I just wouldn't do already in my life? That Nobody can ever answer that. And now, number 22 in the list, we take a bizarre turn. Are you ready? The infographic says that the Church of Satan, quote, believes men who prefer blue cheese dressing, which they misspell as B-L-U-E. Anyway, that men who prefer blue cheese dressing must be homosexually inclined because the odor is reminiscent of a locker full of well-worked jockstraps. That is what they say the Church of Satan believes, and that the Satanic Temple, of course, does not believe that. Now, if your reaction to that quotation is, mm, what? That would be an understandable reaction. Is this just a random thing somebody made up? Did some troll edit the original infographic to say this? Well, some of you might recognize that this is a playful quote of LeVay's that is lifted out of context from the book, The Satanic Witch. I had somebody on Twitter ask me what this quote is all about, so I sent him a link to my blog post where I give some of the same counter-arguments I'm going to give you now. I sent him the link to Satan's Plain episode number six, where I talk about the Satanic Witch, and I said, go read the book. And of course he said that none of this explained the reference, and of course he couldn't be bothered to read the book. So why couldn't I just answer it? Because after all, it's a simple question, a topic uh, I covered, by the way, in Satan's Plain episode number one about questioning. But anyway, it's a simple question and you keep evading it. Wah, wah, wah. I said, no, it is a short question that you asked, but that does not mean I can explain a 200 plus page book within the character limit of a tweet. But then I figured, okay, let me see if I can Satan's Plain this to you in three or four tweets. So here's what I said. As explained in the Satanic Witch episode of Satan's Plain, that you said you listened to, this is me talking to this guy, this book that you're refusing to read, The Satanic Witch, is a book that includes, among many other things, numerous personality tests. And by that, I mean ways to best reasonably side up and read people based on limited information. As I said earlier, we use magic as a metaphor, and that applies not only to greater magic, as the Satanic Bible calls the uh, ritual chamber kind of magic, but it also applies to lesser magic as well, which is the general art of manipulation, if you will. And this is where we get to the Satanic Witch and the Satanic approach to witchcraft. Can you charm, attract, fascinate, or manipulate people through some sort of supernatural powers, like potions or talisman, read minds, that sort of thing? Mm, well, I would say no. There doesn't seem to be any evidence for that sort of thing existing. Therefore, if there is anything in this world that we could call witchcraft or magic, then I'd say the closest thing are these psychological tricks. Things like cold reading and subliminal cues. Things which the average person doesn't really know about or may not even notice, but may have an effect on them. So when it comes to reading people throughout the years, there have been systems created by various people to try to place people in one of several categories based on a little bit of information and making some educated guesses based off of that. In the Satanic Witch, there's a system called the LeVay Synthesizer Clock that's presented and it has various parameters. One of those many parameters is dominant versus submissive personality types. Is this person, generally speaking, a little more on the dominant side, the aggressive side, or are they a little bit more on the submissive side, the passive side? I'm not talking about s and It doesn't have to be that extreme. But it's one parameter, again, one way to categorize certain personality types. And the Satanic Witch goes into detail about different ways you can read people and categorize them, again, based on some limited information. LeVay goes into detail on things like what kind of car do they drive? If they're a musician, what is their chosen instrument? What sort of connection do they show to that instrument? What type of profession do they go into? And so on. 
Now, among these many different examples, LeVay gives his arguments on how certain personality types might manifest themselves in what choices of food the person prefers. If they have a sweet tooth, what would that indicate? So on. Now, more specifically, LeVay says that he has found a person's choice of salad dressing to be an indicator, more often than not, of what region of the personality spectrum in the book somebody falls into. And if you've read any of Anton LeVay's books, you know that he has a certain style of humor that he, he interjects now and then. In the salad dressing example, he uses some of that same graphic humor he's used before. And he makes a crass joke about this kind of salad dressing not only is more often correlated with more passively personality types, but he says, yeah, it's pretty gay. It's, in fact, it's, you know, reminiscent of these kind of pheromones. And then he goes on to the next topic. Is that humor a little juvenile? Yeah, maybe. Homophobic? Well, by today's politically correct standards, meh, maybe. But to take this joke out and ignore the entire rest of the book and use it in a list of things to say, this is what the true Satan believes. No. No, now you're just being a humorless twat trying to dig deep and find something that sounds offensive without understanding any of it. And that approach doesn't really work for the Church of Satan anyway, since Satanism is not like Christianity. We don't treat Anton LaVey's books as inerrant gospel. This isn't a religion for people who have to be led by the hand and told what to believe and when. So this game of finding something you don't like and saying, aha, this discredits the whole book and the whole author, checkmate. Now, that, that doesn't really work with Satanism. Now, if you still wanted to play this stupid game of isolating a quotation so that it sounds silly, I'm sure we could dive into one of those books from the, the Satanic Temple's so-called vast literary canon and find something that none of them actually believe in, but, you know, inadvertently they claim that they do. Hey, you said this was a foundational text, and here's what it says, so therefore you must believe it. I don't have to do that myself. I can already point out plenty of wrong things with the Satanic Temple as it is. I don't understand why the Satanic Temple would have a problem with a quote about well-worn jockstraps anyway. I mean, we're talking about an organization that has mailed cum rags to senators. Excuse me, governors. I'm not making that up. You can look up the story about them putting semen into socks and rags and mailing them to Governor Abbott in Texas. I think it was called Cum Rags for Congress. You can look that up. Uh, I don't know if you want to, but anyway. But finally, we get to the last point in the infographic, the category being, quote, topic of a major documentary about modern Satanism being released by Magnolia Pictures in 2019. Satanic Temple, yes. Church of Satan, no. Well, do I even need to address this one? This is a plug. It's not a comparison. Obviously, they know it's a plug. They said, ha ha, as they wrote it at the end. And they know that readers will get that it's a plug. So, yeah, 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 I get that. But as for the term major documentary, well, major just means it's long. And there's that term again, modern Satanism. They can't seem to define Satanism, let alone modern Satanism. It's, it's not like there haven't been documentaries on the Church of Satan. But yeah, it's a plug for their 90-minute commercial that they're calling a documentary. A documentary which some Church of Satan members were even filmed for, but the creator of the documentary decided to leave it out because she felt it didn't fit with the, you know, the rest of the narrative she was building. Because she didn't want to do an unbiased documentary, it seems. My goodness, we've spent a long time on this. This concludes my analysis and debunking of the Kids Quick Reference Guide put out by filmmaker Kevin Soling's political stunt group, who are not Satanists, but social justice warriors who dress up as Satanists for the sole purpose of playing a futile copycat game in public with Christians, which doesn't result in anything other than confusing the public even more about Satanism and making the Jesus freaks double down on their efforts. Thank you for listening to Satan's Play, and see you next time. Hail Satan. Bye-bye. You have been listening to Satan's Play. If you have enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and subscribe where available. For more information on the show, visit satansplain.com. 
And to learn more about Satanism itself, visit churchofsatan.com. This episode, copyright 2022, Magister Bill M.